And I declare that the conspiracies, the gang up that have in the past frustrated you, every foe that is a pursuer that stubbornly wants to pursue after you to prevent you from entering God's promised inheritance, that they be buried by this anointing in the name of Jesus. What stands like a wall of Jericho, I command them to crumble before you. So I decree that even the opportunities you missed, may God restore them back to you. I wish you had me well. I hear it from within me. That the time to call you from the gutters, from the backside, so that God can showcase you to this world as an emblem of what kingdom citizens are. For some of you seated here today, this is your season of manifestation. I'll say it one more time because I know I carry apostolic grace. In the name of Jesus the Christ whom I serve, I declare over some of you here, whatever was hidden in you that is waiting for manifestation so that this world will see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, I declare this is the season for your manifestation. So let the glory of your life shoot forth. Let the glory of your calling shoot forth. Let the glory of that business come forth. Let the glory of your calling come forth. This is the time. This is the season. This is the season. Satan will always come late if you stick to your life's purpose. Because purpose is older than Satan. Give somebody a COVID-19 shake. Say, I believe that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now here is another scripture. Be seated. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 17, there again there is another reason that I can give to you as to why Satan will always come late in your own situation. Now I'm not saying he's not going to attack you, but if you walk in your purpose, walk in your divine calling, your divine assignment, staying on track, the God that sent you will back you. I'm not talking about all of you becoming pastors and preachers. No, just finding out, Lord, what, what am I here for? And then doing your best to give glory to him, to God Almighty. And Satan comes charging at you. Your assignment, your purpose in Christ will bury him. In Proverbs chapter 1 verse 17, here is another scripture. That gives me the assurance that when the devil attacks you, he's coming late. Read that verse with me. All right. Some of you have not opened there yet. Or you don't want to read it. Let's go together. Proverbs 1, 17, as loud as you can. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bed. In other words, Satan wants to trap you. And he's laying the trap in front of you. Will you fall inside? And why the devil comes late is because the eternal God you serve sees tomorrow. 
He sees the future. He owns the future. He sees all those dark places. He knows what your enemies are cooking. In fact, he knows the thoughts of their heart before they speak out. When God was bringing Israel out of Egypt, he told Moses, there is a road I'm going to lead you by. It's not the shortest road, though, but I'll make you pass by that road because I know that Sarah, I mean Pharaoh is going to come after you. I'm going to lead you by that way because I'm aware of what the plan of Pharaoh is. So because God sees the future, he owns the future. Because God sees the hearts of men, he knows the thoughts of their hearts. To lay a snare for him is a waste of time. And to lay a snare for those who follow him is also a waste of time. The classic example is that of Elisha. The king of Syria will be planning on how to attack Israel. Call his army officers, generals together, lay, map out their strategies. And Elisha will be in his bedroom seeing everything. Then he will take the message to the king of Israel. Tell your soldiers to avoid this place. Tell your people to avoid this place because the army of Syria will be laying ambush in those areas. So to lay a trap before a bed that can see it it's a waste of time. Hey! <laughs> so anybody who follows divine instructions, who takes direction from God, who allows himself or yields himself to be led by the Holy Spirit, And the Lord tells you what to do. Tells you when to do it. Leads you where to go. And Satan shows up to attack you. He's coming late. Because the God that is leading you saw him before he hatched his plans. What is killing a lot of people today is the fear of the future. The fear of death. Fear of tomorrow. Isn't it? That's why they head to all those marabots. The houses of Malams. That's why they go there. Fear. They don't want to die. Hefty politicians, billionaires, will sit on before an illiterate marabot. And, you know, <laughs> even the stench of the mouth is enough to put that man off. But because of fear. I told you this story about years back when I was working in ABU sick bay. Sick bay is like clinic, hospital. And ABU is a community of, 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 of uh, enlightened literates. So I was, you know, um, consulting the patients as they, as they came, one after the other. So one came in and I asked, yes, what's your problem? What can I do for you? He said, Banjin Turenchi, Fa. Banjin Turenchi. There's nobody employed by ABU that will not be able to speak English. So I was wondering, ah, what are you doing here? If you can't speak English, you can't read or write. Ah, so he spoke in house. I said, ah, sendi ba. I said, no, but thank you. Ah. Then he started to roll out the names of professors. He said, Professor Wannan. Yes, send me. Professor Wannan. Yes, send me. Professor Wannan. Yes, send me. Ah. So I asked him, I said, ah. I discovered he was a native doctor. People who made charms for people. Who made charms. Marabots that consulted on the behalf of their clients that would give them charms for protection. 
Professor Wendengasene. Professors from the high cradle of the university will visit an illiterate malam because of fear. And you know that's why some churches will always have members because they trade in fear. They always see things that will put you in fear to make you come back to them. I see, I see, I see. It's your uncle, your uncle, your uncle. Hey! There is a terrible ancestral altar. I can see it very clearly. That they've already decided before December, two members of your family must die. So, sir, man of God, what do I do? Um, um, um. All right, just sow a battle seed. Listen, how will they send their children to school if they can't get that kind of money out of you? So they put you in a state of fear so that you can be their prisoner for life. Any prophet you go to and all he sees is your uncle, your auntie, your brother, your sister. Some even say, now nah, your mother be the problem. She's the one. Now I'm not saying such things don't exist. But I'm saying, if you walk in knowledge, even when they come, you know there is something that came ahead of them. Your purpose and the fact that you are following the Holy Ghost. He's leading you, giving you direction. He knows where the mountains are. He knows where the traps are. He knows where the valleys are. And you are following him. And Satan shows up. That terrible uncle shows up. He came late. Yes, Can I pray for you? Yes, that your persecutors will be the ladder for your promotion. Yes, Those that hate you, they hate your God, will be stepping stones for your promotion. Yes, and as you are climbing up, 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 you look down, you look there. And you let them know this is the doing of the Lord. I've told you before, please be seated, that if Nigerian police mount roadblock for you, and you are flying 35,000 feet above sea level, that roadblock is useless. It can only stop people that are on ground level. But you are not on ground level. I say you are not on ground level. You are seated with Jesus. Where? In heavenly places. The Bible calls it far above principalities and powers. That's where you are seated. So if they mount their roadblocks, you are not even aware that anything is happening. I pray that in the name of Jesus, every tool of oppression fashioned by hell against you, those weapons will fail miserably. In fact, I have a urge to say, this is the season where God will smite you with such joy that people will wonder, what is it that has happened in that house? If you're in agreement with me, you know, all this is just your faith you release. That before December, it will happen in the name of Jesus Christ. It will happen in the name of Jesus. Now be seated. This is why I am confident that Satan came late because the snare was laid in the presence of the bed. And no bed is that stupid. To walk into a trap, it can see. You see, I saw it in the dream now. I saw it in the dream. But I saw it very clearly that Satan wanted me to have an accident. Now, thank God you saw it. It's now your responsibility 
to cancel it. Because when you saw it, the devil is knocking. Is there space? That you saw it does not mean it must happen. It was revealed to you. And it's commonly said to be forewarned is to be forearmed. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. What does that mean? That if they warn you ahead of time that there is danger here, then you arm yourself not to fall into it. A better word is to for pray is to be forearmed. But when you see it, ha, and you take your time to settle things in the spirit realm by praying, then you've armed yourself against that thing. In the name of Jesus, you will not fall into any of Satan's trap. Yeah. My daughters here, you will not fall into the hand of any wrong man. Yeah. That will come speaking in tongues, but they have vile in their hearts. Deceptive, wicked. And they buy you credit. <laughs> and just because of 2,000 naira credit, you say, I do? No. God knows the secrets in the hearts of people. So if you go to him, he will lead you in a path that will avoid the trap of deception. This is important. This is important. Get in divine direction. Get in divine direction. That you make a move only when God tells you to move. Or you go in the direction he tells you to go. Here is another portion of scripture. Why I believe that Satan will come late in your matter. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 says what? That God finished all his works from the foundation of the world. Now, somebody who walks with the understanding that many of the promises of God have already been fulfilled before God gave them to you. In other words, what is called the past tense of God's promises. Everybody say past tense. The past tense of God's promises. If God says, I have blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, that is past tense. By the stripes of Jesus, you were healed. Is that future tense, present tense, or past tense? A lot of God's promises are past tense. In other words, as far as heaven is concerned, I have finished my own. I'm waiting for somebody to claim it. And we've told you that there are some prayers God can never answer again. To ask God to do what he has already done, he can't answer that prayer. And to ask him to do what he tells you to do, he can't answer that prayer. So the past tense of God's word says, I am blessed. I am blessed going out. I am blessed coming in. I'm blessed sitting down. I'm blessed rising up. The fruit of my body is blessed. It is past tense. I am claiming what has been deposited in my account. Now, I don't look at the size of my pocket now to decide whether the scriptures are true or not. No, I don't look at the condition of my body to confirm the scriptures. God is true because God says it. Because whatever he says is truth. Amen. Yeah. I've told you before, if you look at this thing, what do you call it? What is this? Talk to me now. But if God looks at it and says, this is a house, what you saw was wrong. What he said is the truth. Because the moment he says it, it will become what he says. 
So it's for you to agree with him. I am blessed. I am healed. I'm doing well in life. I'm the head and not the tail. Above only, not beneath. On whose authority? The past tense of God's promises. So when the devil comes knocking on your door, you are laying hold by faith on what heaven has already accomplished. If I'm talking to you, wave your hand. So the King Carlo, if I deposit a million naira in your account, a million naira, but you didn't know, will you be able to smile? Will it change your condition? Are you rich or poor? Eh? <laughs> well, he's rich, but he doesn't know. So he'll be going on the street, maybe begging for help. But in his account, he's rich. Some of you have heard about the, 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 the proclamation of emancipation by Abraham Lincoln. When the, 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 the African-American slaves were given freedom. Abraham Lincoln signed it into law. But for many months, many of them didn't know. So they were slaving away in those farms. Now, their oppressors knew. The slave masters knew that those people had been free, but they didn't tell them. So they were slaving, 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 slaving. But the a, a law had been signed. So it was when they now got to know. One of them got a copy of that uh, law of emancipation. The declaration of emancipation. He got a copy. So the following day when the Oga came, as usual, to send them to the farm to go and slave, the man simply showed them the document. I mean the slave man. Showed the Oga the document. And say, we are free. We are free. It has been signed by the president. We are no more slaves. Now at that point, the slave master couldn't lock them in those, in those, uh, in those farms. They walked into their freedom. Brothers and sisters, your own declaration of emancipation has what? The sign. Sign in the blood of Jesus. Satan knows it. He knows that your body, your bodies have been placed on Jesus. He knows it. He knows that the sickness in your body now has been placed on Jesus. He knows that poverty that is making you drink Gary when it's not your choice, that thing has been placed on Jesus. But he's hiding it from you. I'm pumping you full of religious activities. But when your eyes get open, say, ah, Satan, now I know. I won't, slah, I won't serve in your slave market anymore. Liberty is mine. How many of you believe that this, this morning? Please, if you believe that, let me see your hand. Please jump on your feet and say, I am free! I am free! On whose authority? The past tense of God's word. As I conclude, in Genesis 26, Okay, 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 sit down. Just two minutes. Genesis 26, where Uncle Glory referred to earlier, God gave his promises to Isaac. If you start reading from verse 1 to verse 5, almost six times God said, I will bless you. I will make you prosperous. I will be with you. I will, I will. And then if you go down, the Philistines began to frustrate Isaac because he was prospering. The wells of his father that he went and undog 
the Philistines went and filled those wells again with earth. No, 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 that's not the story now. The wells he dug, the Philistines came and claimed them from him. So what Isaac did was to move away, dig another well. They still came and lay claim on the well he dug. Now, to you, a well today may mean nothing. But those years back, to have a well means you're a millionaire. It's one of those things that rich people, well-to-do people had those years back. They came and claimed it from him. He left them alone. Because he was aware God had already said, I will bless you. So he went and dug another one, and they discovered that the, the source of this man's prosperity is an unusual one. So they left him alone. So he called the place Rehoboth, that God has made room for us, and we shall flourish in the land. And the Philistines gave up. Why did they give up? Because they discovered their attacks were coming late. Why well, God has said, I will bless you. I will prosper you. So the well must yield water because the will of God has been spoken. Can I say this? this morning or anyone related to you that has been targeted for attack by those wicked people whose mission is to stop your mission we declare in the name of Jesus that all their weapons be burnt by the fire of the Holy Spirit Amen. all their weapons we command them to fail in the name of Jesus anyone that has come under any mysterious spell that is the reason why you don't understand why your life is just going one kind today i cancel that sentence of the enemy amen i reverse that sentence of the enemy amen and i revoke that spell in the name of jesus amen we trust you've been blessed by the dynamic ministry of God's servant, Dr. John Akpami. You can get copies of our message and books at your local bookshop or at the Encounter Bookshop, Number 1 Revival Avenue by Independent Cinema, Mucho Zario, Kaduna State, Nigeria. We invite you to our School of Healing every Tuesday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. God's power will be present and give you a testimony. You will experience God for real. Till we come your way again for another glorious feast of God's world.